My name is Christine Handy. I'm a model of 40 years. I'm called a lifer. I'm the breast cancer disruptor. I'm a motivational speaker and a mother of two sons. I think what makes me powerful is my unstoppable self-esteem and that came from 10 years of battling illness. And at the time when I was diagnosed with cancer, my self-esteem was at a zero. But when women showed up for me and they shored me forward with their courage, I leaned on that courage until I developed my own courage. And then when my self-esteem became unstoppable, it was my job to help other women. I don't rely on the outcome. So when I was going through chemotherapy, there came a point in my journey where I let go of whether I was gonna live or die. And I just said, every single day, I'm gonna go show courage to myself. I'm gonna show courage to my children and the community around me. And whatever happened next, it didn't matter because I wanted to live for today. I have no idea what tomorrow comes, but today we can show people courage and hope and inspire other people with our stories. I didn't respond very well when I was diagnosed. I had no control over the situation and I lived a pretty methodic life prior to my diagnosis where I thought I was in control and it turns out we really aren't. And so once I had this mountain of women say to me, this isn't transactional, we're going to show up for you in this season regardless of the length of the season, then I felt more sure footed on my own and my attitude changed and I went from being very self-indulgent to very selfless and that was the transformation that I made. So my experience around breast cancer started off very traumatic, very paralyzing. I had been a model for most of my life and I was very dependent on the external facade that I was showing to the world. I was very dependent on a transactional world, especially in the modeling space. And so when I was first diagnosed with cancer, I felt paralyzed and I had a loss of control and my self-esteem diminished. But once I started to take the time of introspection and self-care and started to listen to the thoughts that were going on in my head, whether I was talking kindly to myself or not kindly to myself, I took those thoughts captive. And then the transition from being healthy, strong, self-proclaimed athlete changed into a world of illness. And I realized then that was a season of my life. And every day I woke up and reminded myself that this was a season and it was gonna have an ending. And I was gonna be able to share my journey with great vulnerability so as to help other people so they didn't feel as alone or as paralyzed as I did. Breast cancer completely shifted my life for the better. I was very self-involved. I cared a lot about things. And once my external facade was taken away temporarily, I realized that the inside of me was more important. Our self-esteem is an inside job, not an external job. So the cultural boundaries that were surrounding me no longer influenced my life. I knew that my value had nothing to do with the scars. And so that sort of freedom of not caring about what other people thought of me gave me intense freedom and gave me the ability to help other people. Also gave me the ability to be very vulnerable about the pain and the duress that I went through because I didn't want to put on a highlight reel for the world. I wanted to show the truth about breast cancer, the good, the bad, the ugly, so that other people didn't feel so distant in their journeys. I think my identity has changed, but I loved who I was, always. I've always been a very compassionate person and very empathetic, but I've become more compassionate and more empathetic. And all of the platforms that I'm on, whether it's social media or being a model or being a speaker or a writer, those are all opportunities for me to share my journey, to give people hope. And women need hope right now. And one of the greatest messages I can give is to show how many people showed up for me, because really showing up for people in, in life saves lives and my friends really changed the scope of my life and that's why I do what I do. Well somebody told me very early on that there was great purpose to my pain and I just did not believe them and ultimately that became my motto. If I could take every single part of that journey whether it was during chemotherapy and losing my hair or later when I lost my implants to a MRSA infection all of those were opportunities to help other people and there was gonna be purpose in it. But I had to make the decision, right? It's our reaction to pain, our reaction to trauma that dictates our future. 
I think one of the losses of the breast cancer persona in the world is that once your treatment is over or once your surgery is over or once your radiation is over that your story is over and that's not true. There are so many lasting effects whether it's emotional or physical that happen to each woman that when the, when the cheerleading stops or when the attention stops that person feels more alone. So we need to have more uh, support around the future, right? I think the important message is that it's more of a lifelong journey and breast cancer survivors, breast cancer patients, breast cancer thrivers need support for the long haul. That part is not a season, that's a lifetime and that needs to be addressed. I think it is so important in this day and age to remember that old cultural ideals no longer exist. Being a breastless model is empowering because there are women out there who have had breast cancer, who have breast cancer, who are being diagnosed daily. And in order for everybody to be a part of this journey, we are mothers, we are sisters, we are daughters. It's important to remember that old cultural rules don't, that they don't apply anymore. I think in breast cancer, everybody's journey is different, but there's no comparison. We are all accepting. We want to be a big community of empathetic and compassionate people. We want to show all different distinguishing, graceful, and beauty in breast cancer, and this is part of it. One of the greatest things that I did for myself during my breast cancer journey was work on my self-esteem. I took the negative thoughts captive. I changed the expression of my face. Somebody said to me one time, don't wear the pain on your face, and I started to smile more, and I haven't stopped my smile that internally changed my focus and it changed the decision making that I made. Breast cancer does not have to stop you. It does not have to paralyze you. It is an opportunity to help other people. Women can better advocate themselves during breast cancer now because there's new drugs. There's new opportunities. It's not a death sentence. It's There's groups now. When I was going through di my diagnosis, there were no support groups and now they're everywhere. And social media has helped with that. I would pour into those places. I would look for those outlets and I hope they help you. Look for me, I will help you. Brands, companies, and the population can impact women with breast cancer in a great way. And part of that is not just holding us into one month, right? People are diagnosed every day. And pink is a great color and we love it, but it doesn't just represent October. So I think we, we would love to be supported year-round. I think what I would like to say to somebody that is newly diagnosed, use your story. There are so many who will come after you that need to hear it so that they feel hope. We are a community of, a great powerful community of people that share stories so none of us feel alone. We feel encouraged, we feel motivated, and we're gonna keep going because of that. One of my greatest pieces of advice is to work on your self-esteem. Take your thoughts captive. If they are negative, change the narrative, change the tape. It may take a little while, but once you change it, your self-esteem will become unstoppable too. Regardless of the scars, regardless of the trauma, regardless of the pain, we can change it. It's an inside job. So my mission is to get brands on board to show that breastless doesn't matter, it doesn't dictate your beauty. And again, old society rules, they have no bearing on what is true of today. And it's exciting to be a part of this change in the world right now because exclusivity is out, inclusivity is in. Victoria's Secret, as one of the largest lingerie brands in the world, we thank you for this opportunity to show hope, to show survival, to show thriving to the world, to show beauty that exudes from inside of us. We are a mighty group of women who are filled with love and compassion, and we are so lucky that brands like you represent us.